Samsung have made some very bold claims about their new S20 range, and I was up bright and early and full of excitement, ready to take delivery of the S20 Ultra model. It's packed with top-notch specs and features, but all that comes at a price. Just under £1,200. To find out if the phone is any good and worth all that hard-earned cash, oh, I'm going to spend a day with it, taking it out for a test around Brum. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Quite a weighty phone, 220 grams, 6.9-inch screen, big camera bulge at the back, a very promising assortment of lenses. Fashionably, the uh, screen extends right to the edge of the body of the phone. Very good to look at on first impressions. Anyway, let's... Uh, oh! Oh, gosh, lost. Anyway, that shouldn't be a problem. It is IP68 water-resistant and uh, dust-resistant. That's 1.5 metres of depth for up to 30 minutes. That's fresh water, though, not Earl Grey. So, the Ultra's off to a decent start. But before I delve further into its state-of-the-art delights, I'd better make sure it's got a full tank. There is a super-fast charger in the box. It's 12 minutes until full, it says. Now, the feature that Samsung have worked on hardest with the S20 Ultra is its camera. And obviously, I'm desperate to try it out. Samsung's calling the S20 Ultra the phone that will change photography, which is a pretty bold claim. So what's so special? Well, the headlines are that it can take stills in up to 108 megapixels of resolution and that it has an up to 100 times zoom. First up, I'm using the telephoto lens. This has a 48 megapixel sensor and periscope-like folding optics, which are combined with more and more digital processing as you zoom further in. Over ten times, it starts to use a lot more digital processing, which you can certainly tell, but the image stabilisation is doing a relatively tolerable job of me helping find the target, and you get uh, a kind of picture-in-picture -picture effect, so you can see on a wide view where you're pointing the camera, which helps with framing. But when you get to a hundred times zoom, it can be tricky identifying distant objects. I see quite a few bottles lined up. What are they? Ooh! It's beer rather than wine, I can tell that. The pictures do look a bit fuzzy, I'd say. Fact, very fuzzy. <laughs> Next up, the main wide-angle lens. This has a massive 108 megapixel sensor. To put it in context, that's nine times more pixels than an iPhone 11's. Let's have a look back. So those 108 megapixels do give you extra sharpness. The photography fun doesn't stop there. It also has a 40 megapixel selfie camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a depth sensing camera which helps you add creative touches like blurred-out backgrounds. And if you can't decide which one to use, there's something called single-take mode, which allows you to shoot for up to 10 seconds in a variety of formats, both stills and video. I'm not quite convinced by the photo it's chosen as the best, though. Right, I think even by my standards, that's enough photography for one day. Time for a cup of tea and to check my mentions. The S20 Ultra is running the latest version of Android, Android 10, and it's overlaid with Samsung's One UI 2.1 interface, which is making my essential journalistic research quite a smooth experience. Hmm. The interface aims to keep your interactions at the bottom of the phone's screen, leaving the top as a viewing area. It's got Face ID and fingerprint security. The fingerprint reader is hidden beneath the screen. I mean, it, it doesn't feel ungainly or large. The keyboard's nice and easy to use. It seems to be fast and responsive. It definitely is a premium phone experience. I think I'd be definitely buying a case because I keep touching the sides of the screen inadvertently, achieving unwanted effects. It's all very well having an edge-to-edge -edge screen, but uh, can sometimes be rather inconvenient. Have the bill, please. So far, then, the £1,200 price tag seems to be worth it. But if you're shelling out that much money for a phone, you really want it to be a gadget that can do everything. Now, I'm not one to engage in epic Fortnite death matches on a daily basis, but mobile gaming is a huge force, and at just over a grand, you'd want your S20 Ultra to do it extremely well. The S20 isn't billed as a gaming phone, but it does have an impressive set of specs. What? Oh, oh. that'll give you a satisfying gaming experience on the go. 
It's one of the few phones to have a screen which has a 120 hertz refresh rate as opposed to the normal 60. That means it'll support games that play at 120 frames per second, like this one, Alto's Odyssey. Should make for a super smooth experience. Although, I must admit, the screen isn't quite as tactile as I'd like, and uh, also not very bright out here in broad daylight. Ah! Another thing we all use our phones for is streaming movies and TV shows. But instead of popping on the goggle box, I'm using, you guessed it, the S20 Ultra. Now, the 6.9-inch AMOLED screen might not be that bright in broad daylight, but it should be perfect for a box set marathon here at home. Excellent, and whoa, what a glorious screen. Certainly big enough to get involved. Sound quality, OK, rather than exceptional. Now all I need is a stand to put it on. After a day with this new flagship phone, I'm certainly impressed by its abilities, but my enthusiastic use has taken its toll on the 5,000 milliamp hour battery. We're down to 26%. Hmm. Don't know if I'll be able to get to the end of this episode without going down to a, a low power mode or plugging in. Starting and finishing the day with charging. There's one thing that doesn't change about phones. <laughs> so, John, a very thorough, rigorous examination. I'd expect nothing less. But you didn't discuss the video function. Well, I wanted to leave something to talk about in the studio. I didn't want one of those awkward silences, you know. That wasn't awkward at all. No. Tell us about the video function. Well, it's improved. They've got better image stabilisation. I tried it out earlier, actually, on, on the staircase outside. Left-hand side, no stabilisation. Right-hand side, image stabilisation, which now features AI to help it along. And I think it does a, a pretty good job. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It can also now shoot in 8K video, which I will demonstrate by taking some nice shots of Otis and Georgie here. Yeah. If you do your very best nice smiley faces... <laughs> <laughs> and then I can stop recording and I can go back and I can extract an 8K still from that video. I can then share it onto the screen. Great, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that, John. <laughs> can you zoom into their faces? Why? Why? Yes. The, the picture's there. I want to see the look of surprise. <laughs> That's wow. great, John. Thanks. An absolute yes. keeper, that one, John. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm delighted with that one. I'm going to treasure that forever. <laughs> yes. OK, so, John, in summary, what do you think of the phone? Well, uh, if you're after the best camera in a phone, it's a choice between this S20 Ultra and the Huawei P40 Pro at the moment, and uh, Huawei doesn't come with Google services, so this has a lot going for it. On the other hand, there are new phones coming out all the time that might actually be potentially a bit better, particularly uh, Apple's iPhone 12, which is coming up in the autumn. If you're not that worried about the camera, it's probably worth getting something a little bit cheaper. I mean, even Samsung's Galaxy S20 Plus, still a very good all-round phone, not quite the price tag. Well, thanks for that, John.